Hey guys, this episode I want to talk about some of the steps you'll need to upgrade your TurboLynx application to work with Turbo. Now, TurboLynx has been renamed to Turbo because it no longer only handles links, it actually handles forms as well. And that's going to be one of the bigger changes in your Rails apps. So the way that this works is it's going to intercept all links and form submissions and then submit them as AJAX requests. And the reason they do that is because we can make a very seamless experience on mobile. So when you have your web app embedded on your mobile app, you don't want the CSS and JavaScript to ever reload. So you need to actually submit your forms with um, AJAX. And so let's take a look at a Rails application I have here and the steps we need to upgrade to it. Now the first thing is we need to of course install Hotwire Rails and you can go to their README to install that. But you're going to need to make sure you remove any TurboLynx stuff from your application. And then you'll go to your uh, event listeners throughout your JavaScript and rename them from TurboLynx Load and other TurboLynx events to Turbo Load. And you can test this and make sure that it's working by leaving a console log in here and you can refresh your page, recompile the JavaScript and you should see that your turbo events are firing instead of turbo links. That's going to make sure that you are running the correct JavaScript. Now, the next piece is actually has to do with the way that forms are uh, implemented in the browser. So let's first comment out the turbo JS and turbo links, and we will go and run a Rails scaffold post title and a body text and we'll migrate that. And we'll go to our post model and add some validation. So we'll say validates title, presence is true and we'll do the same thing for body. Now the reason I wanna show you this is that in Rails 6.1 it's changed from local is true and the default in the Rails 6.1 configs is that your forms here are going to be submitted by the browser. And that's important because now the forms are intercepted by the TurboJS library. So if we were to submit this without TurboJS, which I commented out, we will get an error on the page and this will display everything and it will return a 200 OK response. So that is one of the things that we will need to address in our Turbo version of this. But Turbo is really designed so that when you refresh this page, you don't get this modal. And this has been one of the things that is tricky about browsers. They basically implement a feature that if you try and make a post request two times, so if we refresh here, we're going to submit that post request again, it's gonna tell us, hey, it looks like you submitted a form two times. Are you sure you wanna do that? And we don't wanna see this modal ever in our web app and definitely not in our mobile app. And so that is why the TurboJS form submissions are implemented. So if we were to go and go back to our application JS and turn Turbo Rails back on and go back to our post new and pay attention here, when we submitted the form, it actually submitted it to slash posts. And when we refresh that browser is going to redo that post to slash posts. And it's actually changing the URL when we submit the form. Now with Turbo enabled, when we submit this, it's going to do nothing. And it is doing something, it submitted that to our server, but our server is going to return that 200 okay response, and the JavaScript doesn't know what to do with that, because it needs a redirect out of the box in order to um, avoid that modal in the browser. Now there are two solutions to this. We can either go to our postcontroller.rb and have it render the new, but with a status that's an error status. So any in the 400 or 500 error ranges, you can render those. And the TurboJS JavaScript is actually going to see that and render that response HTML out if it is a 400 or 500 level error. So here we go, we have this being submitted by Turbo. And you can see it's a post request to slash posts as a turbo stream format. So we know that that is working and it's replacing this page, but it's replacing the entire page. Um, the way we can see that is if we were to actually make a typo in here, we can actually raise the Rails error page and it's not gonna eat that, it's actually going to render this out like you would expect. The only difference here is that actually your JavaScript and CSS, 
that was available on the previous page is also going to be available here so you can see some of the bootstrap styling for text being bled over into the, in this error page which is kind of funny. Um, so this is also interesting because you will see that we can submit this create post. It's going to render this page and our URL is not going to change. We can actually refresh this page without any errors, um, without any navigation to slash posts. It actually fixes that URL issue that we've had for quite some time now um, and makes that a lot better. So this is a really good improvement to have. Now the other solution, instead of just having um, this being added to each one of your render calls, you can actually undo that and you can go to your page and add a turbo stream frame or a turbo frame tag around your form. So we'll have a turbo frame tag for our post and we can have this handle the form submission for us. So what will happen here is we will submit a post request to create. It's going to have errors, so it's going to go to the else. It's going to render new. It will render the new template with um, this form with the frame tag in it. And because we're already going to have a frame tag on the page around our form, it will look for this turbo frame inside of that response when we render new and it will find the new uh, turbo frame, new post turbo frame and just replace that frame on the page. And so we can even go through and make changes to the page like this and we can say hello world and change the text here and if we submit this it's not going to replace that text because it's only replacing the stuff inside of that turbo frame and you can see that it didn't replace this. Now if we went to the other version of this and we went back and said let's get rid of that and let's add our status unprocessable entity. Now if we were to create that post it will still show errors but what will happen is it's going to replace this text up here. So if we were to change it this time we can say hello world and create post and it's going to replace that text because it replaces the entire page in that version. Now this is the easiest way to actually go and upgrade from Turbolinks and make your forms submit um, to the server with Turbo. Um, and then you can go through and fine tune the way you want to update the pages by using your Turbo frame tags. And the reason you want to do the fine tuning later is because all of your, if you had flash messages, all of your page is going to render with the unprocessable entity status and that's going to include your flash messages and everything, but your turbo frames are not going to. So if you ever use those, your turbo frames are gonna need a little bit extra help in order to, um, to render those out. So if you're just replacing a form with errors, you're gonna be fine. So local is true is now the default in form with, so you're not gonna see that in your scaffolds in the future. Um, it will automatically be submitting as a regular Ajax request or without Turbo, it will submit as a regular post request. So that is really the only two major changes you need to do to either your controllers or views to make your form submissions work with Turbo. So these are all going to be intercepting that submit event that happens in the browser and then converting that to an Ajax request and looking for either an error response or for you to render something out with a frame tag in it and uh, redirects are also totally fine. That is what they uh, were originally encouraging all of your forms to do, but that's not super practical when you're upgrading an app or trying to implement something simple like error handling. Um, you need some way of rendering that back out. So we have these two options with our turbo frame tag up here. So let me add that back in so you can reference that. We can give that tag a simple um, DOM ID, so this can either be a string or an active record model that will be converted to a DOM ID and will include that ID on the page. So when we inspect this, you will see that we get new post right there. And you can also combine these two if you wanna do both. You can have status unprocessable entity and the turbo frame tag, and that'll work just fine too. And that should only do the turbo frame tag piece of things. So if we change this to hello world, we can submit this and it will continue to be displayed. 
So the only other thing I want to mention here is that you do not want to submit any of your forms with Rails UJS anymore. That is going to be taken care of by Turbo. So Rails UJS is actually going to interfere with things and not make your forms work like you would expect. So you want to remove any remote is true on your forms um, and even for your links so that you can use the Turbo JavaScript for all of that. So that is one other last thing to do. And all of this is available now um, by using Turbo Rails version 7.0 beta 2 or 3. Um, these were just released yesterday and include that form um, error handling for 400 and 500 statuses. And that makes all of this work very, very seamlessly. So I'm really excited about all this. And we will be talking more about Turbo um, Frames, Turbo Streams, and Turbo Native in the very near future. Basically what we covered today was Turbo Drive, which handles the links and form submissions in your Rails apps. So that's it for this episode, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.